Many organizations require participants to sign waivers or contracts before participating in activities. Chances are, you've had to sign a liability waiver form before joining a gym or attending a class. While traditional paper forms work, the process can be cumbersome and lacks the security that digital signatures provide. Digital signatures offer stronger protection thanks to encryption and digital storage and reduce the risk of loss or theft. They're also harder to forge or alter thanks to the data captured during signing. Plus, they're more efficient. People can sign from anywhere and staff don't have to deal with filing and storing any paperwork. Once the documents are signed, they're easy to search, reference, and share electronically. Thankfully, Dropbox Sign makes integrating e-signatures into your workflow or application easy with its powerful API. In this video, I'll teach you how to use templates in Dropbox Sign to collect digitally signed waivers. When you create a template in Dropbox Sign, all you have to do is set it up once. Then, you can customize it for each client as needed before you ask them to sign the document. Using webhooks, you can collect the signed forms automatically. If you want to follow along, you'll need a paid Dropbox Sign account. If you don't already have one, they offer a free trial that you can use to test it out. You'll also need an account on FormSwift to generate a release of liability form. You'll need the seven-day trial for this tutorial, which does incur a small fee. Once you set up the template, you'll collect and save signed documents using the Dropbox Sign API. I'll use Node.js to create an app for this purpose. So if you're following along, you'll need to install the latest version of Node.js on your system. You'll also need ngrok to expose your local web app over the internet so Dropbox can send webhook requests to it and curl or any other HTTP client to send requests to your API. In this tutorial, I'm going to create a REST API for a gym management system using Express. The API will have an endpoint to send a new document signature request and a webhook endpoint to download the form once it's signed. I'll start by creating a directory. Then I'll initialize a Node.js project in the directory and install the required libraries. I'll use Express to create the app, Multer to process multi-part form data used for the Dropbox sign webhooks, .env for managing environment variables, and of course, the Dropbox sign SDK, so I can use the Dropbox sign API. I'll create a server.js file in the directory and open it in my code editor. I'll paste this code here. This is just a typical basic boilerplate code for an express server. I've set up .env here and multer here. For now, I just have the root route, which returns welcome to gym management system API. If you're following along, you can grab any code used in this video from the GitHub repo linked in the video description below. I'll run node server.js to run the server, and I'll open HTTP localhost 3000 to see the response. For now, I'll stop the server by pressing Control C. The app I'm going to develop will be run locally on my computer, which means it won't be available from outside the local network. However, for Dropbox Sign to send webhook requests to my application, it needs to be exposed to the internet. There are many ways I can do this. For example, I could host it on a publicly accessible server, but that's a complicated setup, especially when I'm still in the development stage. The simplest option is to use ngrok to make my locally running app accessible to the internet. Since my app runs on port 3000, I'll run ngrok HTTP 3000. ngrok gives me a URL which I'll use later on when I'm setting up Dropbox sign. Make sure you keep this terminal open so that ngrok keeps running. As mentioned previously, I'm going to use FormSwift to create my liability waiver form. I'll visit this URL, which opens a template for a release of liability form. I'll select my state and click on Create My Document. On the next page, I'll be prompted to specify what activity my release of liability form is for. Since this form is for a gym, I'll write Physical Exercise. I'll specify the gym as the party name and click Save and Continue. Next, I need to specify the organization's address. I'm going to use a random address for the demonstration. 
In this tutorial, I'm going to create a general blank waiver that will be used as a template that is sent to several clients. To generate the waiver, I'll select General Form in this dropdown and click Save and Continue. When asked who is going to sign the waiver, I'll pick No One. This ensures I can export the PDF and upload it to Dropbox Sign as a template. To save the waiver as a PDF file, I'll click Save and Export. Once I have the PDF waiver template, it's time to upload it to Dropbox Sign as a template to distribute. On the Dropbox Sign dashboard, I'll click on Create a Template and click Next. Then, I need to specify signer rules for the document. I'll enter Gym Member as the signer. At this point, it's time to use the designer to add interactive fields like Signature, Autofill, or Standard to the PDF form. All I need to do is drag a field from the left menu onto the PDF. Then, I'll position and resize the field to fit in the blank spaces of the form. Finally, I'll configure field properties in the menu on the right. These properties include marking the field as required, formatting, and the field name. I'll go ahead and add interactive fields in all the blank spaces on the form. To save time, I'll fast forward this part. At this point, I've added all the fields. If you want, you can pause the video to copy what I've done. I'll click Next and name the template Gym Release of Liability. I'll write a message, then I'll click Save Template and copy the template ID for later. Dropbox Sign uses Dropbox Sign events to send push notifications to your web application using webhooks. This means I don't need to make unnecessary requests every few seconds to the Dropbox Sign API to check the status of a signature. When the status of a signature changes, Dropbox Sign lets the app know by making a request to the webhook endpoint. So let's create the endpoint in the application that the webhook request can be sent to. In the server.js file, I'll create a new endpoint. When the endpoint receives the webhook request, the request body is multi-part form data with a single field called JSON containing the webhook data in JSON format. That means I need to fetch the JSON field and then parse its contents. Then I'll extract the event type using the event type field. For now, I'm just logging this, but in the next section, I'll add some processing logic to download signed forms. Finally, the endpoint returns a 200 status code with a body containing the text Hello API event received. Your webhook must return this string in the body to let Dropbox Sign know that the webhook was successful. Once I receive the 200 status code, then I'll start the server. Now I can configure Dropbox Sign to send webhook requests to this endpoint. In the Dropbox Sign dashboard, I'll click on the API tab. I'll paste the ngrok URL and add slash webhook at the end. I'll click Test to make sure the webhook request gets sent successfully. When I confirm that it works, I'll save it. Now, I'll develop an endpoint to send signature requests to clients. When creating a new gym member in the system using the API, it makes sense to send each new member a release of liability for them to sign before their first visit. To do this, I'll create an endpoint in my application that saves the new member's details and sends the signature request using the Dropbox Sign API. To do that, I'll need an API key to communicate with the Dropbox Sign API. I already have an API key, so I'll just copy it. If you don't have an API key, you can click on Generate Key to create one. In my project directory, I'll create an env file. Then I'll create two variables. One is named Dropbox Sign API Key, where I'll paste the API key. The other one is Dropbox Sign Template ID, where I'll add the template ID. In the server.js file, I'll import the Dropbox Sign SDK. 
Then I'll create a new instance of the signature request API class and set the API key as the username. Now it's time to create the new endpoint. This endpoint will receive the member information such as name and email address. In a real life scenario, you'd save these details in a database. But for this demonstration, I'll skip this step and go straight to sending the signature request. I'll use the signature request send with template method to create the signature request. This method requires a bunch of parameters. The first one is the template ID, which I'll load from the environment variable. I'll add the subject and message that will be sent as an email to the user. Then I'll specify the signers. It must be an array of objects where each object represents one signer. Since I have only one signer, it'll be an array of a single element. The signer object must have the role of the signer. I'm also fetching the name and email address from the request parameters and passing them. Then I'll configure how the signer can sign. I'll allow them to draw, type, or upload their signature, but I'll disable signing from mobile. I'll set the test mode to true. In test mode, the signatures aren't legally binding, and it doesn't consume credits. Finally, I'll send the response back. I'll restart the server, and it's now ready to send signature requests. To send a signature request to the member endpoint, I'll use curl. I'll provide my name and email ID. I'll receive an email like this. I'll view the document by clicking this button. As mentioned before, this is not legally binding. I'll go ahead and complete the required fields. I'll click on Continue to finish the process. If I go back to the terminal window where the app is running, I'll see a list of events that Dropbox signs sent to my webhook endpoint as the user opened and completed the signature request. I'll add the logic to download the signed PDF. The signature request all signed event is fired when all the signers have signed the document. I'll update my webhook endpoint to download the signed PDF when this event is received. In server.js, I'll import the fs module. Then, in the webhook endpoint, I'll paste this code. If the event type is signature request all signed, the code first fetches the request ID. Then, it uses the signature request files method to download the file and save it in the signed docs directory. Let's try it out. I'll stop the server and create the signed docs directory. Then, I'll restart the server. I'll run the curl command again and go through the process of signing. Since you've already seen me do this, I'm going to fast forward a bit. When I'm done signing, I'll be able to see the PDF in the signed docs directory. I'll open it, and as you can see, it is indeed the signed PDF. That's all you need to do to collect digitally signed waiver forms from your clients. The Dropbox Sign API makes it easy to sign and collect documents. If you're trying to simplify the signing process, Dropbox Sign makes it easy. Don't wait, sign up for Dropbox Sign today. Happy coding!